we already got the majority of the aldermen who have signed on for reparations. Mr. Mayor, why aren't you signing on? Why aren't you saying yes? Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen this year, not next year, or sometime in the future. Because as we know, the future is not promised to anyone. Chicago is home to something called Homan Square, a facility. That's right. Look at that. This is a facility that is disappearing our people unconstitutionally, where they are being shackled, they are being beaten, and they are not being given their access to a lawyer. This is not right. It's not right. Right? We want that thing investigated. We want that thing shut down. But we also understand that this isn't actually that much of a surprise. If you've been listening to what black youth have been telling us about their experiences with the CPD, we, we already knew about this, right? There are folks like Mary who have been telling us about these rumors for a really long time about this facility. We know that cops pick up young black people and drop them into rival gang tour territories hoping that they'll get killed. This happens all the time. That in fact, this spectacle of Home and Square is really just sort of hiding the mundane terror that people experience every single day in this city. And so we have to understand this fight as in that larger context of police violence. Right. That it surrounds us, it becomes the new normal for us to not even notice the abuse that black bodies experience every single day. We also have to understand it's not new, that this goes way, way, way back. Yeah. I just found out the Chicago police were founded in 1835. The forced slavery ended. And so we know that the police come out of the slave patrols. That is what this institution comes out of. So we have to understand that. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming out here in this cold weather downtown tonight. Thank but you. this is an uh, uh, inspiration. This shows that people power can make a difference. Woo! You know, whether it's warm, whether it's cold, if there's an injustice being perpetrated continuously, then it's on us to make the difference. It's on us to stand up, to come out, and to say, no more, no more. I said a couple of months ago before the primary was over with, Mr. Mayor, you cannot take the people for granted. You're gonna to have to deal with issues that you really don't wanna deal with, such as reparations, such as police torture, such as the racism that exists here in the city of Chicago, which is alive and well. And again, we're saying, Mr. Mayor, primary is over with. We have spoken. You did not get 51%. You're in a runoff now. You're going to have to deal with us. You're going to have to deal with this. This. You're going to have to deal with all of us. That's right. We make the difference now. No longer are we silent anymore. Reparations will come to Chicago. Reparations yes. will send a precedent throughout the United States for other civil rights leaders to come to Chicago and say, how did you do it? Yeah. We did it with people power. That's, right. That's how we did it. So please, whatever you do, don't stop. Our movement has become not only from the past to the present, but to the future. All the youngsters that are here today, you are tomorrow, and because of you, we have the inspiration to tell you what it is that needs to be did here in the city of Chicago. Mr. Mayor, if you are serious about wanting to be the caretaker for another term, then you're gonna to have to come to grips with reparations. No longer can you sit on the sideline and say, well, the atrocities was, was wrong, and." I'm sorry, but it didn't happen on my watch. A lot of things didn't happen on your watch, but you're taking credit now for turning it around. So if you're taking credit for that, then you must take credit for the atrocity that existed before you came into office. And all we're asking you to do is what is right. Reparations, getting a police department which is sensitive to the needs of the communities, is something that is not far-fetched. It's something that can be happening now. So we're saying, Mr. Mayor, 
if you think that you can still ease on in there for a second term, I think you've already had a wake up call. Already. You did not win by 51%. You didn't even win by 50%. You won by 49%. Now, that's a huge difference, especially when you got the president and other distinguished people coming in voting for you, but yet you still did not galvanize the majority. Why? Because people are waking up.